Okay, so what do we know about total comprehensive income? It's net income from the major league income statement plus other comprehensive income, those items that we're going to go over now that get forced into the minor leagues for a while because they're not ready for big league ball. It's that net income plus that other comprehensive income that equals your total comprehensive income. And we can present it either in one statement or two statements. So the income statement is where items are reported that are ready to impact corporate earnings in the current year. These are most of your items. They're major league ready. Most of your revenues, expenses, most of your gains and losses go in the income statement because they're major league ready. But other comprehensive income is where items are reported, but these are the items that are not ready to impact earnings in the current year. They're not ready for big league ball. They get placed in the minors, and that's where they're going to stay until they're ready to play in the majors. Now, what are some of these items? Now we're going to go through them. So, the first one I want you to know about is unrealized gains and losses on available for sale debt securities. They're going to play in the minor leagues. Because up in the majors, you're going to see unrealized gains and losses on all equity securities. So if you invest, if you have excess cash and you invest in other companies' stocks, anything that's equity, by the end of the year, if that equity has gone up or down in value, even though you haven't sold it yet, that's called an unrealized gain or loss. And unrealized gains and losses on equity securities, look up top there, those play in the majors. That's on our income statement. So if we invested in somebody else's stock and it went up in value, it's an unrealized gain, that unrealized gain will be in the income statement for us. If that stock investment went down, that unrealized loss would be on the income statement for us. So any unrealized gains and losses on all equity securities goes on the income statement. But look down below in the minors where the number one is. Unrealized gains and losses on available for sale debt securities those unrealized gains and losses are not ready for big league ball. We put those unrealized gains and losses into OCI. So for starters, we need to know the difference between equity and debt securities. All equity securities are treated alike. If you invest in equity securities, your unrealized gains and losses will appear on your income statement. But not all debt securities are treated alike. So if you have excess cash and you invest in other companies' debt, you're either going to classify that debt as available for sale debt, or if it's not available for sale, you might categorize it as trading debt, or you'd categorize it as held to maturity if indeed you expect to hold it that long. Only where the unrealized gains and losses are on available for sale debt securities, securities that you've classified as available for sale, those unrealized gains and losses, and only those, will play in the minor leagues. And how would that look as far as journal entries go? Well, it looks like this. You first make the investment, you have excess cash, and you purchase available for sale debt securities. Debit investment and available for sale debt, 100000 Credit cash, 100000 That's all balance sheet, right? One asset goes up, investment and available for sale debt. Another asset goes down credit cash. Now assuming fair value at year end is 90,000, that means the bonds went down in value from when you bought them to the end of the year. That's your first mark to market adjustment. And that's going to result in a loss. That 10,000 is going to be a loss. You're going to recognize that loss, but look where you're going to recognize it. Debit unrealized loss on available for sale debt securities, that loss is going to go in OCI. Not the income statement. We're going to stick that loss in the minors. It's going to play an OCI into the minor league income statement. And we're going to credit investment and available for sale debt. And that loss, that unrealized loss, will sit in the minors until that security is sold. Or maybe it'll come out when the security goes back up again. So unrealized gains and losses on available for sale debt stay in OCI. Now, what if this was instead of a debt security, what if it was equity and the equity security went down by 10000 
you bought stock in another company instead of bonds. Then that unrealized loss would be in the majors. It wouldn't be in the minors. Then that unrealized loss would be in the income statement. But because it's on debt securities, and because it's on available for sale debt securities, the unrealized loss is going to play an OCI. So now that's because the price went down. Let's look a little below that. You'll see where it says, assume instead that the fair value at year end is 105 instead of 90. So we bought it for 100, and then the fair value at year end is 105, not 90. So now it actually went up by 5,000. We have an unrealized gain on available for sale debt. How are we going to record that at year end? Well, it's going to be a gain, unrealized gain, but look where that gain is going to play in the miners. Credit unrealized gain on available for sale debt securities, OCI, not the income statement, and debit investment in available for sale debt securities. So the asset goes up, and you record the gain, but you recognize it in OCI. These gains and losses will not play in the majors until these securities are sold. So they'll stay in the minors until the security is sold. So in this part of the exam, where they're asking you OCI questions, you're going to get something that looks like this maybe. Ignoring income tax effects, how much should be reported as other comprehensive income given the following information? Revenue, expenses, loss on sale of fixed asset, unrealized gain on available for sale debt securities. How much is reported in other comprehensive income? Well, the only... OCI item here is the last item, unrealized gain on available for sale debt securities. And that's a $20,000 gain, which is answer choice B. See, the rest of this is income statement. Revenue, $400,000 minus operating expenses of two seventy, minus the loss on sale of fixed assets would give you net income of 100,000, but they're not asking for net income. They're asking for OCI, other comprehensive income, and based on these facts, it would just be a gain of 20,000, letter B. Now, if they ask what the total comprehensive income is based on these facts, then remember what total comprehensive income is. It's the net income plus or minus the OCI, and the net income we just said was 100,000, revenue of 400. Minus operating expenses, 270. Minus loss on sale of fixed assets, 30. Net income would be 100,000. And then plus OCI of 20, total comprehensive income would be 120, letter D. Because total comprehensive income, if you recall, is the sum of net income plus other comprehensive income. Let's try this one. They want to know how much is OCI, other comprehensive income, given the following information. And if you notice a pattern, when I want to use OCI, I write it in blue. If I want total comprehensive income, you're going to see it in red. So they want to know how much is OCI, that's just the other comprehensive income items. We have an unrealized gain of available for sale debt securities of 20,000. We had that in the previous question. Now we have another one. Something new that wasn't in the previous question is this realized loss on the sale of available for sale debt securities, 5,000. Well, a realized loss is different than an unrealized loss, and all realized gains and losses would go to the income statement and play in the majors. It's the unrealized that go in OCI. So your OCI gain, unrealized gain, is still going to be 20,000, and that's what's going to play in the minors. Now, based on these facts, what is the realized, no, sorry, what is the total comprehensive income? It's in red, so it's total comprehensive income. They give us the unrealized gain and the realized loss, along with these other income statement items like revenue and expense. So, First thing, if we want total comprehensive income, we want net income, and net income is 100,000, revenue minus the operating expense minus the loss on sale of fixed assets. But then what about the realized loss? That's right, that's going to be a reduction 
of net income also. So net income, instead of being 100000 it's actually 95000 now because we have to subtract the realized loss on the sale of available for sale debt. And then the only thing that's other comprehensive income is the 20000 unrealized gain on available for sale debt. So that makes the total comprehensive income 115 letter D. So now we know that net income plus other comprehensive income equals total comprehensive income. And we know that net income gets close to retained earnings at year end. So if you have, like in the previous question, net income was 95000 And to close that at year end, you would debit net income and credit retained earnings. This way you close out net income and you place it into retained earnings. Equity goes up for the year after a profitable year. But OCI needs to be closed out too at year end, and that gets closed out to other, or sorry, accumulated OCI. OCI gets closed to AOCI, accumulated OCI at year end. That's going to close OCI at year end from the previous question. We just had an unrealized gain on available for sale debt of 20000 So what we'll do there is we'll debit the OCI gain of 20000 to close it out, and we'll credit accumulated OCI, and that goes to, to equity. That's how we increase equity, and that's what we say about OCI. It goes direct to equity without hitting the income statement. And that 20000 is going to sit in equity until the security is sold. All right, how about this? Which of the following gets closed to retained earnings at year end? A net loss would but not OCI. OCI gets close to AOCI. So letter A. Which of the following are not stockholders equity accounts? Accumulated OCI? Retained earnings. They're both stockholders equity accounts. Letter D. The goal of which of the following is to summarize all changes in equity from non-owner sources? That's the goal of total comprehensive income, B. Remember, it's your net income plus OCI equals TCI, total comprehensive income. All right, R Corp had the following information for the current year. They had net income of 20000 They had a positive $2,000 cumulative effect of change in accounting principle. And then they had a $5,000 unrealized gain on available for sale debt securities. What amount is their total comprehensive income? Well, you got net income of 20000 The positive or negative cumulative effect of change in accounting principle isn't going to affect total comprehensive income because that's going to be direct change to beginning retained earnings. So forget the 2000 The 5000 unrealized gain on available for sale debt is going to be an increase and total comprehensive income is 25000 letter A. So keep in mind that although net income plus other comprehensive income equals total comprehensive income, anything to do with a cumulative effect of change in accounting principle does not enter into the calculation of total comprehensive income, nor does a prior period adjustment or error correction. So in this one, where it asks for total comprehensive income, we said that's just the net income plus the unrealized gain on available for sale debt. The cumulative effect of change in accounting principle would only change the beginning retained earnings balance for the current period. So that wouldn't go through net income, nor would it go through comprehensive income, but it would change equity. Let's try this one. Sanderson Corp. had the following information for the current year. They have net income of 80000 There's a prior period adjustment. That means they're correcting an error from a prior period related to a failure to accrue warranty expense on the prior year's income statement. Unrealized loss, 6000 on available for sale debt. Let's try this. Sanderson Corp. had the following information for the current year. They want to know what's the total comprehensive income. So then you want the net income, which is 80000 minus the unrealized loss of 6000 
on the available for sale debt securities, and that would be a total of 74,000 of TCI, total comprehensive income, 74. Ignore the 10,000 if they want total comprehensive income, because a prior period adjustment would just change the opening balance of retained earnings. It would not go through net income, nor would it go to OCI. So the answer is C, 74,000.